コートガラシ、天使投げ、週末どうせ1、ヒリキノヨセ1。Do you feel your back foot is really, really light and all your weight is loaded onto your front leg? Do you find all these movements tough? Are you falling over at the end or losing your balance halfway through? If you can see yourself in any of these videos or you feel any of those things that I just mentioned, don't worry, this is very, very normal. Stay tuned to this video because I plan to give you a top tip that will hopefully help you fix this issue. Open up. Hi, guys, and welcome to this week's episode of Mugenjuku on the Move. So, my top tip for solving this problem of when we shift forward and end up falling over because our weight is too far forward or our back foot is too light. If you've been lucky enough to train with Pius Sensei, you may have heard him say in the dojo not to push off of the back foot and to move with your hips or to move with your center. This can be a really difficult concept to grasp, and I can understand why. If we want to make a movement, it's very natural for us to push off with our foot. We do it when we're walking, we push to get moving. But actually, if you look at people who have studied how to walk, Better using our body, they would actually tell you that it starts from the hips and that it's the rocking motion of our hip moving forward which then creates the momentum for us to walk. This is the exact same point that Pai Sensei is getting at when he tells you to move from your hips. If you move from your back foot, let's say for example when doing Kotagash, the throw at the end of Kotagash, if we move by pushing off with our back foot, It tends to lift this back hip up slightly. That then puts our weight forward, and that wants us to move forward this way. If we do that, plus we add the weight of someone being thrown and pulling us, that then is going to pull us off balance. Instead of us moving in that way, we need to stay grounded so that we are an anchor to the person that is being thrown. If we then push with our back foot and we lift up, we are no longer grounded and we can't be this anchor. So, Pai Sensei talks about moving from our hip. Now, how do we move from our hip if we can't push from our back foot? If we keep our feet both equal, this is something else that Pai Sensei mentions often in the dojo about keeping our feet 50 50, balanced. If we're in a good kamaya and we're balanced, from here, a good exercise is to just start rocking the hip. So bending through the front knee and rocking the hip backwards and forwards. So you can feel that momentum and the power coming from your hip. Now, all you have to do is count to three. And on the third count, slide through. So you just make a larger sway with the hip using your, your bum muscles and The feeling like someone's pushing your lower back. One, two, three. And we slide through. Because we're keeping our feet equal and level and balanced, when we slide through, at no point is our heel coming off the ground, and at no point is our weight going further forward than our legs. Because we're bending this knee, As we begin this shift, if we watch slowly, as I bend this knee and I start sliding this foot through, my hip is still over my leg because I've got that bend in the knee. And then my legs change and my back leg comes through. So, a little bit, of course, is timing, and that you will get through practice. But you have to remember if we don't have our feet underneath us, we can't stand up. So, if I push with this back foot, My feet are no longer underneath the majority of my weight, and that's when I'm going to fall forward. And again, here, my posture, my weight is now all on my front foot, and my back foot is light. So, through this movement, we want to try and get it that our weight is balanced 50 50 through both feet. 
So try this for an exercise at home. Come into Kamae, imagine you're doing Kotegaish, or you're doing Tenshinage, or you're doing Shumatsu Dose Ichi. Let's start with Kotegaish. From here, we need to move this back foot through. So we're going to come into a good Kamae, we're going to feel that both feet are grounded and that they're at 50% each. Now we're just going to start rocking our hip. We're going to keep the feet balanced, but we're going to move this hip backwards and forwards by bending the front knee. Then you can make this slightly bigger and then count to three. One, two, three. And slide forward. And you'll find how you are automatically much more balanced and stronger in this finished Kamai because you haven't pushed up and forward. Now let's look at Shumata Dose Ichi. We're back in Kamai. Our balance is 50-50 in our feet and we now start rocking the hip forward and back, keeping the front knee nice and soft and bending that knee and allowing our hip to move. But from here, we can then make this movement bigger. Feel that movement of your hip and feel how solid your feet feel and how grounded they are to the ground. Don't let the back heel come up as you shift forward. Now from here, same exercise. We're rocking, we're gonna count. One, two, three, and slide. Remember, keeping that back heel down is really, really important to our balance. And by bending the front knee and moving our hip back and forward, it allows us to keep this foot down on the ground. And it allows us to keep our weight all the way through the foot so that as we slide, we can keep this foot down and we're not letting it come up. Pius Sensei often talks about keeping the knees soft. The knees, naturally for us, are our shock absorbers. Traditionally, we wouldn't wear nice sneakers with bubbles in them that squidge so that we don't get the impact from the ground as we walk. We would normally walk barefoot and our knees are the shock absorbers. Now, because we've got so used to wearing sneakers, we've lost that ability to absorb the shock with our knees. So sometimes it can be a bit difficult when we go to the dojo and we take our shoes off. We have this contrast. But our knees should be nice and light and spongy. Because when we move, we need to absorb our movement in our knees. We need them relaxed so that we can move quickly. So two points I'd like you to take away from today's video to try at home. One is to not push through this back foot. And two is to keep your knees nice and loose, nice and spongy on that front leg. So that when we move, it's like a shock absorber. And we don't get any of this sudden stop and jolt and we don't damage our knees from that big smack of impact, but instead they allow us to softly go into that position. Okay guys, so that's it for this video. I hope that was helpful for you, and I hope that you can put this into practice at home or at the dojo, wherever you are. Remember, stay safe, stick to the rules, keep well, and keep training. Thanks again for tuning in to Mugen Juku on the move. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the like button if you enjoyed the video today and hit the bell button. That will let you know when our next video is online. Thanks very much again and see you in the next video. Oss.